Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a bunch of do-it-yourself Christmas home decor items and displays. These are super cute, easy, and affordable projects to add to your holiday and Christmas display. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do today is how to recreate faux whipped cream or faux whipped topping. This is a really cute topper idea for a mug or a bowl and can really be customized to fit your theme in so many different ways. So the first thing you're going to need is the item that you want to place this topper in or on. So I'm going to use these on mugs. Again, you can use these on mugs or bowls, bakeware, etc. So I'm going to quickly just outline the size and area that this topper is going to go. And then you're going to cut along the edges. This we're just going to work right on top of, again, just via base, kind of like the floor or the bottom of what we will work on top of. Next, you're going to need some lightweight spackle and some acrylic paint. I'm going to use a off-white color for this example, but you could of course use whatever color you want. And you're just going to stir this up really well. As far as how much you're going to need of each, depending on the size you're looking for, this can vary, but per whipped top, you're going to need about 8 fluid ounces of the spackle, and then depending on the color and how opaque you want the color to be, you can kind of just add as much paint as you want. Start small, mix in, and then add more if you want it to be darker or more vibrant. Then you're going to need some cupcake filling set, cake decorating set, little nozzles. This set also comes with the plastic baggies, so this is a complete set. I highly recommend picking up. It's very affordable and makes this process so easy. So you're just going to scoop the spackle and paint into the little plastic baggie with the tip at the bottom. Then this step is up to you. It makes it a lot easier and you don't need as much product if you use this technique. So I'm just going to use a little plastic or acrylic condiment container. This is just a very small container you would literally use for like ketchup. <laughs> you can pick these up from many different places and I'll include the links for everything in the description box for you guys. But I'm just going to use this to help work around. This makes it super easy to wrap. And again, you don't need as much speckle or product because this is going to act as the center or middle of your whipped cream. This also keeps it really sturdy, so I highly recommend going this way as far as technique. You could, of course, just use the speckle itself, but you might need a bit more patience as far as structure and shaping goes. Then I'm going to bake the topper at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes. And this is what it should look like after you remove it. And it should be dry and solid. So this is just gonna help speed up the drying process. Make sure you let the whipped topping or topper cool down prior to adding your toppings, that way nothing melts. Then you're going to move on to decorating. So to get the decorative toppings to stay, I'm going to use multi-purpose spray adhesive. And I'm just going to spray this right over top of the spackle topper. You can also use other things like Mod Podge or other types of adhesives and glues. I'm also going to use some holiday sprinkles and candies and place this right over top. Now, very important, I want to make sure you guys understand that real food and real candies, etc. are made to melt when they get wet, hence when you eat them. So, make sure that your topper is cooled down and you're using a very light hand with your adhesive. If you use too much of your adhesive, too much glue, the spackle's still wet, there's any type of water interaction, this is going to cause real food toppings to melt, and the coloring is going to bleed. Again, if you are going to use real toppings, real candy, real food, etc., make sure you use a light hand with lots of very sheer layers of adhesive to ensure that your sprinkles or candy, what have you, doesn't melt. You also, of course, have the option to use other toy candy items or even beads. You can make fake candy out of clay. There really are a ton of options that you can do. I've also seen little buttons and different types of beads that look like food and candy. So you can really shop around to get different ideas to achieve the look you're going for and also to make it easier without the worry of the candy or sprinkles melting. So I made a few with just holiday sprinkles, then some with crushed peppermint or candy canes. I also added a thicker piece of the candy cane, sort of like a little straw, or just more of like a decorative piece at the top. And again, just light layers of the adhesive over top. This one I actually used for a birthday party ice cream bar. So it doesn't all have to be Christmas theme, you can do really any type of theme for a party or holiday season.
Then I wanted to make one that looked like chocolate syrup, so to do that I just used some Mod Podge and some brown paint, mixed it together, and then poured it right over top. This just creates the illusion of the chocolate syrup without using real food and having to worry about bugs or anything else. <laughs> So that's it for these little guys, super quick and easy to make. They just really add a cute little touch to your display. And again, you can use them throughout the year in different seasons, different toppings, different holidays. I just think it's so cute. And I got so many compliments on them last year. So I wanted to show you guys how to do them this year. The next thing I'm going to show you are faux marshmallows. Again, these are super simple, really easy to make. They can be used for Christmas displays or a s'more display in the summer. They could be placed out in a jar, container, or made into a garland, etc. So here's how I have mine displayed at my hot cocoa slash coffee bar. So all you're going to need for this is Model Magic white modeling material. You could also use different types of clay, but I'm a big fan of the Model Magic because it's so lightweight. It's extremely airy and the texture of this is perfect to mimic the look of a real marshmallow. So all you're going to do is rip a chunk off and you're gonna to start to roll this. And then you're going to slice along to fit the size of the mini marshmallows. I did use a real mini marshmallow to compare, but if you don't have one, you could just eye it. That's totally fine. And you just wanna round out the edges to soften them. When you cut them, they can get a little harsh or sharp. So just use your fingers to round these out slightly. Then you're just gonna leave these out 24 hours to dry and harden, and then they're ready to use. You can make as much as you want depending on how you're gonna use them. To create the look of a larger marshmallow, you're gonna follow the same steps. So you're just gonna rip off a chunk and round out the edges. Once you make the right amount or the amount you're looking for, let these dry and they're good to go. They could be used as is, or you can make them to use as a topper, like the previous whipped cream toppers I showed you. You can make s'more ornaments. You could also use markers or the clay itself and paint to make snowmen or to give the marshmallow a face, but you get the idea. Really, the options are endless and you can get super creative with these. Moving on to faux s'mores. To make my graham crackers, as well as a few other items later in this video, I'm going to make a dough using cinnamon, craft glue, and applesauce. So to make the graham crackers, I'm going to use a cup of cinnamon. Then I'm going to mix in two tablespoons of Elmer's glue and a cup of applesauce. Depending on how many you're gonna make, you may need to add more to your mixture or you can just simply make another batch. So you're gonna mix this up really well until it's sort of like a Play-Doh-like consistency and all blended together. Then I'm going to lay down some cinnamon on my cutting board, place the dough over top and get it ready to cut. So I'm going to roll this, flatten this into a rectangle shape and then cut it to be more of a square. And then I'm going to place a little bit of cinnamon on top and bottom. The cinnamon just helps you absorb any excess water or liquid from the applesauce. It also keeps it from sticking to your surface and your hands. So once I have the size and shape, I'm going to create the detail using a little carving tool. So when you look at a graham cracker, it has sort of like these little dotted and line like texture to it and pattern. So I'm going to mimic that as best as I can. You can either look up a picture of one, or if you have one in your pantry, grab one of those as inspiration for creating your own. And you're just going to repeat this as many times as needed for the amount that you want to make. The dough itself will look darker when it's wet, but once it dries, it becomes this very light brown shade, very similar to a graham cracker. If you need to lighten it a bit more, you can add more cinnamon or even use paint. So to create the chocolate, I'm going to use another piece of that dough. This time it's going to be a smaller rectangular shape and I'm placing that in the center. 
Once all your dough pieces are ready, the graham cracker, the piece of chocolate, and later on your gingerbread people or houses, you're going to bake these on 200 for two hours. This is going to help them dry and solidify, speeding up that process. You also have the alternative to let them dry overnight. Be sure that the pieces are completely cooled before moving on to the next step. You don't want to apply any adhesive or paint when the dough is still too warm. So using that same magic modeling material or clay, I'm going to use these to make my faux s'mores. Then to make it look like chocolate, I'm going to use a dark brown paint, letting this bleed, drip, and kind of spread onto the graham cracker to give it more of a melted look. Then I put my faux squished marshmallow over top in the top of the faux graham cracker, and it's complete. Super simple, if you wanna keep it together, you could hot glue it or use some sort of adhesive, or if you wanna use it like I did where you can take it apart and kinda of have it an undone little sandwich, you can do that as well. You could have it single, you could have it stacked, you could put some in jars, etc. Not only is this project really fun to make, but it also makes your house smell amazing. It smells like gingerbread, cinnamon, apple, like fall and winter time, it's just amazing. Literally, I was crafting and my boyfriend got home from work and that was the first thing he said when he walked in, was the house smelled so good. So here's an example of how I have my little faux gingerbread people and little mug topper houses. You could have them on the edge of your mug here like I have, or you could just have them displayed. You could keep them mini or small this size, or you can make a bigger size to be a replica of an actual gingerbread house. For the last two do-it-yourself projects, you're going to use that same recipe for that dough. So I'm going to quickly whip up that dough again, literally the same recipe. And I'm going to use little cookie cutters. I have three different sizes here. You can either use cookie cutters or cut them out by hand. And I'm just going to place these on a cookie sheet in preparation for baking them. So here are my ginger people. You can see I added a little bit more cinnamon right over top to help lighten the color, soak up any excess liquid. If you notice any cracks in the dough, you can also just use your finger lightly or a little brush and blend the cinnamon right over top. Also, I mentioned before, if you wanna make any of these into ornaments, a really easy way to do that is to use the edge of a straw and press this down sort of like a cookie cutter this is going to create that little hole where you can place a ribbon or twine or whatever you want to string along. But I'm just using these for display, so I'm going to skip that part. And again, I'm going to bake these for two hours on 200. Then I'm going to give these a few minutes to cool down. Once these are completely cooled, you can then take your paint to create the detail. You can leave them plain if you want, but I wanted to make mine cutesy, so I'm just using some white puffy paint right over top and giving them little outfits and personalities. <laughs> then you're just going to allow 24 hours to dry and they're done. They're so cute. You could use these for other things too, not just display or ornaments. You could use them for placeholders like name tag displays at the dinner table, or you could use them as gift tags. You could use them for goodie bags to make magnets garland, you can make little teeny tiny ones into earrings or jewelry, whatever your heart desires. You get the idea. <laughs> so again, you're just going to cut out the shape that you want for your houses. So most of you have probably made a real gingerbread house before, so you pretty much know how to do this, but you're going to create the front and back of the house, which is the square shape with the triangle on top. Then you're going to need two rectangles for the roof and for the sides. If you are going to make them into a mug topper, make sure you put the door in front and back, not just the front. That way it has a place for the mug room to sit. Then using a hot glue gun, I'm going to glue these together. Then 
Once this is put together and dry, you can take your puffy paint again and you can fill in detail however you would like. This is going to create the look of the icing and give detail. You could add other miscellaneous items like you did with the whipped topper, for example, if you wanna add some sprinkles, other shapes and colors of dough, different colored puffy paint, glitter, sparkles, gems, beads, etc. So simply allow these to dry and they are ready to go. Perfect for displays, ornaments. I think they're just so cute. So that's everything for today's do-it-yourself holiday Christmas theme projects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are still subscribed to my channel and that you have notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I hope you guys have a happy holiday.